How do you punish a private for losing his weapon or piece of equipment, yet you don't punish a general for losing a war or a conflict? What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Jay. I'm a retired Green Beret out of 3rd Special Forces Group. The intent behind this channel, guys, is to share my knowledge and wisdom with the next generation. So if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe to help me reach that goal. I appreciate it. Also, guys, if you like the content that I'm putting out, subscribe to the channel, become a member. As of Monday, I started putting out member-only content. To get those content, you must subscribe to the channel. Right now, I currently have two separate levels, Junior Charlie, Senior Charlie. So support the channel, sign up for the membership. Guys, today I wanted to do a article review. Today's article is written by retired Army Brigadier General Donald Bulldog. Now this dude is a stud. He is the epitome of a good leader. I had the pleasure of serving under then Colonel Bulldog when I first showed up to 3rd Special Forces Group in 2010. Funny story about um, then Colonel Bulldog. So in 2010, I got to my first team over at 1st Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group and they were forward deployed conducting a VSO or village stability operation. That's where they took an ODA and they put them out there in a the town or in a village and they're responsible for that village, sometime that entire province based on if there's multiple ODAs there. So we're out there conducting a VSO operation out at uh, Maywan District and then Colonel Bulldog and his staff were doing battlefield circulation, meaning they went around and they checked on all the different ODAs that were conducting a uh, VSO operation and country. So Colonel Bulldog gets to our fire base as the new guy. I was out of sight, out of mind, right? I didn't want to see the CSM. I didn't want to see the Colonel. I just wanted to go high in the hole somewhere and do my work. At that time, my hole just happened to be the gym, right? I was in there working out and Colonel Bulldog, he's talking to the leadership and he's walking around our little VSO site and he saw the gym that I had just put out. Like I built it out of, you know, pallets and there was a tent on there and there was some gym equipment that I had brought to the site. He comes in the gym while talking to the leadership. He gets on the bench and starts cranking out fucking reps. While he's knocking out his reps, he's still talking to the leadership and they're still talking to him. Once he was done with the bench, he drops down. He starts doing push-ups. While he's doing push-ups, he's still talking to the fucking leadership. He's down there knocking them out, just having a conversation like it's nobody's business. He gets done with push-ups. He stands up. He starts doing jumping jacks, still talking to the leadership as if nothing's going on. And I'm in the corner like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He is like a fucking energizer bunny. He just keeps going. I swear throughout his whole visit on that fucking site, he just exercise every chance he got like he would go behind the fucking uh, shower that we had installed and he's talking to everybody and he's doing lunges and i'm like okay something's going on with this guy later come to find out man like he he just likes working out he's a fitness fanatic and by far man like this dude has been the best leader i've ever had in my military career like i would literally give my left fucking nutsack for that dude man he's legit with that said, guys, let's move on to this article review. Now, if you are a fan of this channel, then you know I can't fucking stand toxic leaders. Can't stand them. They fucking make my balls itch. Apparently, so does fucking retired general Donald Bulldog. So he wrote this article that came out on the 18th of April, pretty much detailing what the military has become. I want to go through this article. I've highlighted a couple of paragraphs or a couple of key stuff that I want to talk about. If you want to read the article in its entirety, I'm going to leave the link in the description section below. Go read it, comment on it. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. The title of the article is Today's Toxic Leadership Crisis, which I truly believe there is a crisis in the military as far as leaders goes. Now, in this article, he's attacking it from the officer standpoint because that's what he was. I do the best that I can over here to attack it from the enlisted standpoint. Without further ado, guys, let's get into this article. Starting off with the introduction, all right? I hold our company grade officers, non-commissioned officers, and our enlisted personnel in the highest regards. Given quality leadership and the tools necessary to do their job, they will do what every generation of American fighting men and women have done, win. Unfortunately, post-Vietnam has brought in a collection of self-serving officers 
at the senior level in today's military that has undermined our military and its ability to win wars or conflict. Unfortunately, the toxic leadership at the senior military level is bleeding talent away from our military. Guys, it's right here, black and white, from his perspective. These new batch of leadership that we've gotten post-Vietnam era are self-serving. And I've seen this firsthand while I was in the military. They will do whatever they can to move on to the next rank. If that means throwing folks under the bus, they will do that. I'm glad I'm not the only one that sees this. And because of it, folks are leaving the military by the numbers. Like I have Green Berets that are six years in and they refuse to fucking re-enlist. Now these guys have dedicated, you know, six years of their lives doing the hardest job that the military has to offer. And it's rewarding. However, the leadership just finds a way to take all the fun out of it, guys. So because of that, like he mentioned in this article, People are leaving the military at a fucking high rate and it's hurting our recruiting numbers. Bad. Let's keep reading. A huge issue that has evolved in the military is that your career is over if you make a mistake. This zero mistake tolerance has corrupted the senior level of our military to the point where learning from mistake is not allowed. Admitting mistake is a weakness and blaming subordinate becomes the rule. Yep, textbook. At no point in time are senior leaders taking fucking blame for what they've done. As a leader, I'm a firm believer in whatever happens or fails to happen is your fault. So if you're the battalion commander and everybody below you is fucking up, dude, it's your fault. You're responsible for coaching, mentoring, and educating all of those officers below you. And those officers are responsible for the enlisted guys in their ranks. So if they fail, you fail. Just because they fuck up don't mean you throw them away. The buck stops with you. That used to be a term in the military that was fucking pretty powerful. But nowadays, it's no longer fucking used, all right? Guys are pointing fingers. They're fucking firing their subordinates for shit that happened because they want to look good and they don't want to take the blame on themselves. A good example of this, according to this article, is the fucking Tongo Tongo incident, right? Where a bunch of senior leaders from all sorts of echelons were pointing fingers at the fucking subordinates for what took place. They ended up firing the major, the fucking team song got relieved, the captain got fucking fired, and nothing happened to the generals or to the colonels at the fucking high echelons. That is a classic example per this article, guys. Before I point things at anyone, the reader must know that I was a toxic leader in my military career. In my leadership class as an associate professor, I thought there's no such thing as a perfect leader. I would start by telling my student that I, was a, that I was an imperfect leader and made every mistake in the book in my leadership journey. There are all kinds of leader attributes, but over the time, I found the critical aspect of being an effective leader is to know yourself and stay loyal to those with who you serve. Now, I like this paragraph right here because uh, General Bulldog is pretty much telling you that, hey, I'm just as guilty in this as any other officers. And I like that because it speaks to ownership. You must first take ownership if you wish to affect change. And then he also hit on a very important point that I spent 20 years living my career by, and that is to be loyal to who you serve. Meaning, as a team sergeant, I had 12 guys under me that I was responsible for. My loyalty was to those 12 dudes. I'm responsible for everything that those dudes do or fail to do. And I take care of them to the best of my ability. Fuck everybody above me. Their loyalty should be to me as one of their subordinates, just like my loyalty is to my subordinates, my 12 dudes. I shouldn't be kissing their fucking ass, tickling their balls, making sure they're all right. That's not my job. That's not what I'm there to do. I'm there to take care of my guys, train them, coach, teach, take them down range, bring them back home. But along the lines, that has been fucking lost for all these leaders that the general is referring to, mostly senior officers, because they are worried about their careers and not the individuals that are put in their care. So I love this fucking uh, paragraph right here, guys. Let's keep reading. Only when I was a battalion commander did I realize how broken my leadership style had been. I was very embarrassed. The more I observe our senior leaders, I found the senior leadership system to be flawed. I learned it is characterized by loyalty flows up. 
going along to move along. An organizational nepotism inside a club for good attending members. How do you become an excellent standing member? Find a sugar daddy that you can ride the coattail. Never be a contrarian. Always cover the track of your senior leader, even if it means throwing one of your subordinates under the bus. Guys, this article right here is fucking textbook what is actually going on in our fucking military right now. Going along to move along. Becoming part of a fucking system. Riding the coattail of certain individuals to the next level. You don't even have to fucking perform, right? As a team song, you could be the shittiest fucking dude ever. But as long as you know the right CSM and you're always down there fucking tickling his balls and sucking on his fucking nutsack, you're going to move along. That type of shit fucking happens. Same thing with officers. My fucking team leader from 2013 to 2015. Awesome fucking dude. Epitome of a fucking officer. Was a enlisted guy and then he transitioned over and became an officer. So he knew both sides of the spectrum, which made him a better leader. Went to Afghanistan, crushed it. They fucking feared us in that fucking region of the country. But he was one of those dudes, he didn't take shit from anybody. He knew his responsibility. He knew where his loyalty lied. His job was to take care of the man underneath his command. And he did that. He wasn't tickling anybody's nutsack. Wasn't fucking cupping anybody's balls. And they hated him for that. They ended up pushing him out of fucking third group to where he's at Fort Lewis somewhere working for another command and he could never come back to fucking third group. Solid fucking officer. We respect him. Partner force respect him. He's by far the best officer that I've had a chance of working with. Yet, he could never come back home because he wasn't a politician. He wasn't towing the line when he knew the line shouldn't be towed, right? So for that, He'll never fucking be a third grouper again. And that's fucking sad. Guys, I just wanted to come on here and go over this article with you. It is fucking accurate to the T. The general did a good job writing this, guys. I'm going to leave the link to this article in the description below, guys. Eager to hear what you guys think. Read it and let me know what you think, guys. But he is clearly fucking fearful of where our military is going. And it's not in a good direction. How do we fix this? Grab your fucking nuts and start doing the right thing, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video.